you know, they're, they're in Africa. They're, they're lending money to countries to build ports and different to, infrastructure. To build what? Port harbors. And what's wrong with that? And, well, because... Countries that need ports <laughs> get ports. But they're making people dependent on... I mean, I know, it's the same thing that we've done, which is no, it's not. all around the world. They are, they are far more humanistic than the United States ever was. <laughs> really? Okay. Absolutely. Great. So... Let me give, give you an okay. example. Of course they are trying... They are peddling for, in, for, for influence. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, but they are non-interventionist. Absolutely non-interventionist in a way that Europeans, the West, has never managed to fathom. Hello, good people. And of course, welcome back again. I've taken quite some time. I've not been feeling well. So that's why I've not been very, very much into the social media or in YouTube as, as used to be to me. And I'm back again, guys. Thank God I'm here and you are there. Thank you for watching. And also, if you're watching us for the first time, please remember to subscribe, comment and share. Now, today I want, I want us to discuss about China investing in Africa and why US is now much concerned China investing in Africa now before that guys I want us to watch this video of this former minister Yanish Varoufakis answering this American journalist who is much concerned in China investing in Africa now guys let's dive in this video and watch it I'm been very concerned lately about China and sort of there we have transferred so much money from our economy over to China by buying all those things and supporting their economy over there so they could make more and more money. They are now all over Africa, you know, buying things and investing over there and getting those countries dependent on them and supporting, you know, non-democratic people. And I'm just like whom? Well, we come. We are in a country that supports Saudi Arabia. Yes, that's yeah? true. Right. So, so suddenly we have a problem with, uh, you know, superpowers supporting non-democratic people. <laughs> yes, I mean, yes, I do. But I also am just concerned that we've sort of created the economic power that China sort of has now, and they're using it. I fear, going to be using it against us eventually, and against the better interests well, of a lot of people. Allow me to put your mind to rest. Okay, great. You, 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 you shouldn't worry about that. Okay. It's very simple. <laughs> and let me explain why you shouldn't worry about that. But please continue. Well, I mean, they're... You know, they're, they're in Africa. They're, they're lending money to countries to build ports and different to, infrastructure. To build what? Port And harbors. what's wrong with that? And well, because countries that need ports get ports, but they're making people dependent on. I mean, I know it's the same thing that we've done, which is no, it's not all around the world. They are, they are far more humanistic than the United States ever was. <laughs> really? Okay. Absolutely. Great. So let me give, give you an okay. example. Of course, they are trying, they are peddling for, in, for, for influence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they are non interventionist. Absolutely non-interventionist in a way that Europeans, the West, has never managed to fathom. But I, I have a feeling they have a longer-term thought process that's, uh, okay. that is more right, right, interventionist. Right, right. But, but, but anyway, let's judge what so, we no. see. Let's okay. judge what you, okay. wait, let, Let's start at the, at the beginning. The Chinese never asked Apple to go to Shenzhen and produce all the iPhones. It was um, Steve Jobs that decided that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Uh, the, it was not China that um, uh, went to Washington DC and demanded that they buy a third of your national debt. If they hadn't bought it, you would be in serious trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, number three, I did allude to this in my talk. If in 2008 China had not cranked up their credit bubble, you would be in, the great, in, a, in a new Great Depression now. Mm -hmm. So, China, the United States, and the European Union are absolutely syner uh, synergistic, and they need one another in a way that if we fail to acknowledge and to nurture uh, billions of people, including the majority of the people in this country, are going to suffer. Now, 
I am not going to sit here, uh, stand here and um, defend China and the Chinese Communist Party. I already made some negative remarks about the Chinese Communist Party in, in referring to, you know, mm -hmm. their attitudes as being uh, compatible with those of Wolfgang Schäuble. My concern about China is the authoritarian manner in which the Chinese regime is treating the Chinese people. As a Democrat, I have a problem with this. Mind you, I have to tell you that, from my understanding of China, there is a very, it's a very interesting social experiment, in the sense that at the local level, or the regional level, you now have a boisterous democracy. At the local and regional level. Eh? With, even with uh, uh, popular success stories in overthrowing local uh, authorities, local bureaucrats who have been corrupt, who have been this, who have been that, who have been the other. When it comes to the influence of China outside its borders, I have to say, firstly, it's quite remarkable that they don't seem to have any military um, ambitions. Secondly, Africa. I'll give you an example, a specific example, Ethiopia. 2004, because it ha happened to be there, and I, I have some uh, first-person, first-hand experience of it. They went into Ethiopia. <coughs> I'll tell you why they went into Ethiopia, because they suspected it was oil. <laughs> because China is a major industrial power, but it lacks primary resources. Now, instead of going into Africa with troops, colonially, destroying the country, killing people like the West has done, <laughs> for the last hundred years, what they did was, they went to Addis Ababa, and they said to the government, we would like, and we can see you have problem, problems with your infrastructure, we would like to build some new airports, um, upgrade your railway system, create a telephone system, and rebuild your roads. And we'll do this all, th all for free. No strings attached, we don't want anything from you. And they did. Why did they do it? Because it's soft power. Because they, now, because they knew that if oil is uh, uh, discovered, and it was discovered later, then, of course, the Ethiopian government will be much more open to Chinese oil companies coming there. They have never combined their investment with imperialistic... Uh, you, I, I, you know, when I was Minister of Finance, I had a, a very interesting ex experience with Costco one of the Chinese national companies that, in the end, bought the port of Piraeus. Uh, when, 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 I, when, when I moved into the ministry, I found a contract from the previous government that they had already sold the port of Piraeus for a pittance and other ridiculous conditions to the Chinese, uh, under the guidance, of course, of the European Union and the International Monetary Fund as well. And, in other words, I was as a minister, I was uh, bound to a particular deal that was terrible for Greece. And I went to the Chinese and discussed this, it with them. And I was really astonished. I said to them, look, you're paying too little, you're not committing to a sufficient level of investment, and you are treating our workers as fodder, uh, you are effectively subcontracting labor to horrible companies that exploit the workers, and I can't deal with this. Uh, effectively, I proposed to them we, to renegotiate the contract, so instead of getting 67% of the shares of the port, they would get with the same price 51. The remaining shares would go into uh, the Greek pension fund system in order to bolster the capitalization of the public pensions. Secondly, I want you to commit to 180 million euros of investment within 12 months. And thirdly, proper collective bargaining with the trade unions and no subcontracting of labor. And to my astonishment, they said, okay. <laughs> Can you imagine if that was a German company or an American company? <laughs> That's why I'm saying I don't think you should worry. Okay, yes. I won't. See by yourself that it is true that the US is very much concerned with the Chinese investing in Africa and it has turned to be a threat to them because uh, most African countries well, are welcoming Chinese into their economies because uh, of one, two, three reasons, guys. I have a problem in my eyes. So many, many African countries are welcoming Chinese into their economy because 
of the reasons that we want to discuss here in this video and um, most books read that us is the superpower lately we've seen us sending threats to the chinese government and you, you see chinese are not even shaken with this why because chinese has reached up a level of superpower and this is why chinese is not shaken with the threats that us is trying to send to them chinese are approaching africa on the development strategy they are approaching africa on the infrastructural strategy they want you to change your economy they want you to have good roads to have good airports to have good ports okay and as well as they also gain from you compared to us how many countries has us uh, laid sanction on them a number of countries in, including zimbabwe lately we've seen they want to lay a sanction to the uganda but the U uganda president was not shaken and was not afraid of them they even stopped m7 from traveling to america and m7 replied to them that he is very much comfortable in uganda because he has got everything that uh, he, he might want in life and therefore he doesn't have to go to us for him to be called president of uganda so this is how bold some african countries are towards the us government so i think it's time for the us government to change their strategy on how they want to approach and relate with africa because having a military in all the african countries borders does not qualify you to be a superpower okay and i think this is what us has to do they have to change and withdraw all their armies from the from african countries africans do not want you people to force them with your sorry my light has gone off africans do not want you guys to force them with your way of life they don't want you to, guys to force them with your religion they don't want you to force them with the with their with, the, with, the, with your practice of same sex marriages and this is what Africans do not like with US but US is forcing Africans to do this because if 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 they don't they will impose sanctions they will withdraw their fundings their aids towards African countries okay Chinese comes to you this way that we can see your roads are not good we can build your roads free of charge improve your infra infrastructure free of charge and also make your airports look advanced free of charge but in return you allow, you allow us to build our gold mine in your country you see that's a very good deal than coming with your title of superpower that uh, to conquer africa or to to get something from africa okay that's why uh, mr yanis is telling this journalist that they are so much humanistic as compared to us because us comes with their title that they are the superpower and therefore they want abcd from your country if you can't give them they impose sanctions in your country i don't want to speak much about this topic but i want to give you this opportunity to also tell me what you think about in the comment section guys and let's meet again in our next video